Howdy freeze dryers, this is a video that I have been patiently waiting to make and the time is finally right because I wanna know whether a different pump, better quality pump, a higher CFM volume pump will actually speed up the freeze drying process. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I love Harvest Rite's Premier Pump. It's a, it's a great pump, it's very quiet, it's good quality, but there are obviously better quality pumps out there. Recently I acquired a labeled Neo D16 pump. It's a very expensive pump, but something that is probably one of the top tier type vacuum pumps that you would use for freeze drying. Uh, it actually costs more than my freeze dryer, which is kind of crazy, but it's a good quality pump. It's extremely quiet, it's very efficient. Uh, they use this in all kinds of NASA, aerospace uh, lab settings, and this pump only needs an oil change every three years. But even with all of those pluses, it's probably not worth the extra cost for most people's scenario in freeze drying. Uh, for me, you know, I make a living off of doing this. I've been freeze drying for a long time, and not only do I do YouTube, but I mean, we just have other things where we're just constantly freeze drying. So for me, it's a, it's a justifiable cost, not for everyone, but if, this could speed up the freeze drying process in total. It could open up a new opportunity for people because it might be worth spending the extra money to make a faster freeze drying process. Freeze dry more food in less time. So in an attempt to be as scientific as possible, I'm gonna put both of those pumps head to head. I'm gonna try and uh, replicate the identical environment other than the pump. So I think I need a product that's gonna be very, very consistent, and what I landed on was milk. Uh, whether you buy one gallon or 12 gallons, the amount is gonna be the same, the ingredients are gonna be the same. Uh, really, there's not gonna be very many variables, and I can also measure it and put it onto identical measurements onto each tray. So let's get started. I'm also going to start my freeze dryer prior to putting the trays in, and I'm not gonna add the trays until we are at the exact same temperature for both runs with the labeled and with the Harvest Right Premier Pump. I'm using oat milk today. I'm gonna shake each one of these really well before I do this. I'm gonna start with two cups per tray, and I'm going on to pre-cut parchment. You could also do this with silicone. Uh, if you've done milk before, you know that it gets kind of sticky to the tray. And even though it seems like the milk would make the, uh, the paper super saturated, you're removing all the moisture. So once you get it uh, done, you can just pull that paper up and it won't stick to the tray. And you will also notice that I am not going to pre-freeze this because I think that will add some additional variables if we do a pre-freeze. So we're just gonna go straight into the freeze dryer. We're gonna uh, make sure that both cycles have the identical temperature before we add the trays. So if you need some of these nifty freeze drying accessories, make sure you check out freeze drying supplies. You can get pre-cut parchment here. You can get tray stackers that will help you with organizing your trays. You can get tray dividers. You can get silicone, all kinds of different stuff for uh, streamlining your entire freeze drying process. The freeze dryer is almost through its 15 minute uh, cooling when we first started up. So. What I need to make sure is on the second run that we do, it is the same exact temperature before we add the trays. The other thing I need to make sure is that our milk is the exact same temperature added to the trays right before it goes into the freeze dryer. Other than that, we, have the, we will have the same measurements of two cups of milk per tray. Uh, everything else should be pretty close to identical as much as we can control it at least. It looks like that temperature is gonna be 58 degrees. So we'll just maintain that same temperature on the next round. This round, we're gonna use the Premier Pump. This is Harvest Rite's Premier Pump. It's what comes with every freeze dryer now unless you upgrade to an oilless pump. I like the Premier Pump. I have always liked the Premier Pump. It's always been their best option uh, since it was uh, since the start of when it was offered. Our next cycle, we will use the labeled uh, Neo D16. If you are curious about this pump, you wanna learn a little bit more about it, I have made a video. I will link that down in the description where you can find uh, that, that video kind of going over this pump. 
I'm uh, just starting to kind of test things with this pump. I'm gonna do a couple different things. Uh, this being one of them testing to see if it makes a faster freeze drying cycle. Another thing that I've always been curious about is running multiple freeze dryers off of one pump. You have to have a very good quality pump to do that. This pump will do that. I've seen it done before. I'd like to experiment with that myself. That video will be coming up soon. So this cycle's going now. It should take a very short time. I'm guessing probably around 20 hours with this pump, uh, but we will see you in a second. All right, batch one with the Premier pump is now complete and you're gonna see why pre-cut parchment paper is so important with things like milk, liquids, soups, things that like to stick to the bottom of trays because now we have no sticking to the trays whatsoever. And that cycle took 25 hours, 53 minutes and 37 seconds. And because it did not stick to the tray, it just makes it that much easier to package, especially if you have a food funnel. We can just go straight into a bag with it, crumple it up as we go. Let's get our next batch ready with the labeled pump. So I'm gonna let this completely defrost. I'm gonna let it get to room temperature again, the same exact as it was uh, with the Premier pump. I'm gonna take the Premier pump off of here. We're gonna swap it out with the labeled and then within probably a few hours, we'll be ready to go on the next cycle with the labeled. And now we are ready for round two. Normally I would do dividers in the milk uh, because it adds a little surface area once the, uh, the water starts to get removed. It, it tends to freeze dry a little bit faster in my experience. Uh, once the water starts to be taken out, it speeds up the, uh, the tail end of the freeze drying process. And my philosophy on that is that there is more surface area for moisture to escape once it starts to shrink down because it has, has those grids in there, once it pulls away from the grids, it exposes more sides uh, to have the water removed from. Now it's time for the labeled. Uh, it's a more expensive pump, higher CFM. The freeze dryer will be the same temperature when we add the trays. Uh, it has the same startup temperature, so it's not gonna uh, change in efficiency. The room temperature is the exact same as it was on the previous cycle. All right, let's see what the more expensive pump does. Oh no, this is not what I expected. This is not what I expected. Our cycle ended up at 27 hours, 39 minutes. That's more time than with the Premier pump. And because it was within an hour or two, I don't really feel like the results uh, favor either pump. I was expecting the label to be faster and probably quite a bit faster, but it appears that it's not. Because it was such close results, I don't think, I think you would have to do multiple tests over and over again to really get a definitive answer. So with that said, I think what I would like to do is, I'd like to hear your results. If you have two kinds of pumps, I would like to hear whether one is faster than the other, whether that be an oilless versus a Premier, the old standard versus a Premier, um, if you have an upgraded pump over a freeze drying pump, I wanna hear about that too. Let me know down in the comments section because I think this is a, a very viable argument in the freeze drying world and really kind of something that's important. No one's ever talked about it. And from my knowledge, I, I don't know that anyone else has ever done it. On the plus side, I have a lot of freeze dried oat milk now, which uh, I use on a daily basis. But thanks for sticking this out with me today. I feel like this was not a fail. We all learned something, whether, whether or not it was a, a big landslide win or a landslide loss, it wasn't really either. It was actually just kind of a tie, I would say. If you found the video helpful, we have lots of other freeze drying related videos. Just subscribe to Live Life Simple. Click the bell to get notifications. Every time a new video comes out, it'll let you know. And we'd sure appreciate a thumbs up. In the meantime, remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.